With an Oscar and two Golden Globes, she's one of the best actresses of her generation. She's one of my personal favorites. She's also an activist and now a children's book author. Her new book is called Natalie Portman's Fables. It's pretty rad. I literally checked it out recently. You should check it out as well. It's great. Your kids will love it. Let's say hi to Natalie Portman! such a huge fan. This is like, these are days that my job, this new job is so awesome because never in the world would I ever meet you. So, well, where are you and, and what are you up to there? Well, I'm in Sydney, Australia right now, uh, getting ready to film Thor. Uh, yes! And, um... It's so cool that you're, you're going to be Lady Thor. So do you get all of Thor's powers is my real question. Like I'm a huge nerd for Avengers, any kind of superhero, like I've seen them all. So do you get powers is my question. Uh, so she does have powers. <gasps> um, it's not exactly the same as Thor. It's her own, her own version of it. Yes. And, um, and she's called the Mighty Thor. Oh my gosh, what a cool character to play. Um, so Super. who is your personal favorite superhero or favorite superpower? Well, uh, you know, I, I have to say Thor, I think, as um, the greatest <laughs> superhero. But but of course, I mean, I'm so excited that, um, you know, we're going to have a Black Widow movie and Captain Marvel, of course, yeah. and all the women of Black Panther. And, yeah. you know, there's so, so many exciting um, characters coming up. I know. I think it's really important what you just said, too, because I, I don't know. I feel like when we were kids... Um, there wasn't as much representation for girls. It's kind of cool because not not only my little boy has all these like boy heroes to look up to, but also female ones. So you're you're right yes. in that sense. It's very cool. Yeah, that's totally true. I mean, I think people usually say how great it is for the girls, but it's really important for the boys. You know, for yeah, boys to get to see women in those kinds of characters and in those kinds of. Um, personalities and um, it just expands opportunity for how we all see each other. Yeah, that's an amazing uh, point of view, yeah, perspective as well. Um, so what have you learned about yourself during this strange time of separation? And it's just been a weird 2020 for people and everybody's kind of got their own thing they've been going through. So what have you learned? Yeah, I, I've been so amazed by everyone's resilience and flexibility and ability to adapt and community um, it really um, has been such a, a, a devastating time, obviously, for so many people with um, lives lost. If there's also been beautiful sides of, um, you know, seeing how much time spent with your family, how meaningful that is. Oh, it definitely makes you cherish your relationships with loved ones more. Yeah, amen. Um, have you been cooking for your family? Do you cook a lot? I'm not a great cook, but I can. <laughs> I, I love cooking. I'm not like, I have no training or skills. Like if anyone saw the way I chop my vegetables or whatever, they'd be horrified. But um, I love it and um, I love trying new things. And um, yeah, it's been a fun period of experimentation because there were so many things that we used to like order in or go to restaurants that my kids loved that all of a sudden we couldn't get anymore and I had to figure out how to make it at home. Oh my God, you're such a nice mom. I'm just like, well, it's not happening. Um, <laughs> dream and a different dream. Um, well, what's your go-to dish? Like if you're gonna like whip something up for like your kids or something. Um, I, I like making um, like a vegetable couscous. Um, yeah. I use like kid-friendly vegetables that I know that they'll they'll eat. Um, but uh, couscous takes five minutes to cook the actual grain. And then the vegetables also is like, you know, you kind of like cut everything up and throw it in a pot and then it's, uh, you can wait for it to be done, do other stuff. Um, yeah. I always find those are the easiest with kids, you know. Half the time you're like holding one kid in your arm while you're throwing stuff in the pot. Yeah, so, or they're yelling um, at each other and you're like, oh gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep. Well, kids are yep. so honest. So what's one thing that came out of their mouths recently that surprised you? <laughs> um, so my son got to go to camp here, actually. And he said to me, um, Mom, some girls at camp said you look good for your age. <laughs> oh. oh that is and he said, and then he said, it's good you keep your sunglasses on because, you know, it covers your wrinkles. So I was like, thank you. Oh, my gosh. 
That's amazing. My my kids. And then he will, said, "I love you," so it makes up for it. I know. <laughs> my kids will walk up to they they think big is adult. Like when they say big, they just mean adult. But they'll walk up to people and be like, "You're so big." And like, that's not really what everyone wants to hear. <laughs> but they, for some reason, they think, no, cause you're a big, I'm little person, you're a big person. They think, yeah, it's really, really fun to explain, so Natalie. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a girl, what book series were you obsessed with? Cause now you're an author. So what really inspired you as a kid? Oh, I, I was, I mean, this is an older kid than like my kids are right now, but when I was in like nine to 12, I was obsessed with the Babysitter's Club. Oh like, my gosh, yes. I used to wait for the next one to come out and like line up at the bookstore and read it immediately in the car on the way home. And I was just like, it was my life. That now they have the Netflix series that just came out, The Babysitter's Club. Yeah. So good. I know, because my six year old should not be watching that, but I found her watch. I mean, it's just kind of a weird thing for a six year old to watch, I guess, but she loves it. <laughs> but. but I think a lot of it would probably just go over their heads. It's nothing like. Exactly. Wow. She doesn't even understand. The only thing she does understand is she, the kissing parts in any movie or anything. She's like, oh, my God. And she, like, totally freaks out. And she can't help but, like, smile from ear to ear. I'm in so much trouble when she's a teenager. It's so funny. It's so funny. They, they just really, like... It yeah, glom onto that so early. Well, we've both written children's books. So what was your writing process? We love your children's book. We read it oh. all the time. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I am um, my, I have a three and a half year old little girl and yeah. um, she like, I, I made up my own tune with the song and. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's so nice. It. Well, my kids are um, gonna flip. I literally like was reading this during lunch and I, this is such a great idea. Where did you come up with the idea? So when I was reading books to my kids, I realized, so my son is nine and my little girl is three and a half. And the books that we got when she was born as presents were so different than the ones we'd gotten from my son. And um, I realized that the kind of like normal books um, aren't addressing like uh gender issues, the books that boys get to, mm -hmm. um, and that the books that we were reading him, the kind of classics, had almost all male characters. And so I thought, what if you took the classic stories, like The Tortoise and the Hare, The Three Little Pigs, yeah. um, The Country Mouse and the City Mouse, which are the three stories I retold, and just made it equal genders, just so that there's boy characters and girl characters, yeah. so that boys and girls, when they're reading these classic stories, are exposed to girl feelings and boy feelings mm -hmm. alike. Um, and um, because it's really, to me, stories are the way that we learn empathy. We learn to imagine how someone else might be feeling or what someone else's day is like. Yeah. Um, because when you read a book, you care about the characters. And when you watch a movie, you care about the characters. And so you're basically practicing caring for somebody else and what their life is like. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, it was so important to teach both my kids empathy for all people um, and all animals, because all the characters in the stories are animals, um, yeah. which also made me, um, it was a big effect on me as a kid, like reading books about animals with feelings and thoughts and who talk to each other. Um, I mean, I definitely know that had an impact on me becoming vegetarian at a young age too, because yeah. it would be hurt yeah. if, I, if I wanted to eat them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like, I don't know how to say it. Well, wait, your, your new book is called Natalie Portman's Fables. That's the, that's the name. Yeah. Yes, and yes, I, have the, I have a copy. I know, it's so great. And it's I love, fun. I mean, the art is so cool. It's so classic. I was looking at it during lunch and I was freaking out over it. It's so well done. Yeah, Jenna Mattia, um, the illustrator, is so talented and mm. I was so lucky. And she has so many like little jokes inside the art that I love that my daughter loves finding. Like there's a um, there's a rabbit taking a tortoise out of the hat, and there's a like there's a porcupine making um, making a, a balloon animals. Oh uh, my god! Horns and um, it's just there's so many sweet. Um, details that she put in that are so fun for kids to to notice. I love that. It's like oh, back in the day, like pop-up video with MTV. Like, did you know? And it's like, that's, it's amazing.